40 more have entered, but the cuts have been made, and we are back here for round four of Tactician's Crowns 3. It is me, so Dan, I'm here with Riley, and uh, I mean, we've seen some great players come and go, and we've seen some great players stay and rise to the top, but we got to take a look at who we lost, because we lost a very important player that we were keeping an eye on here uh, going into this next set. Yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get a look at the scores right now on your screen and oh, oh, oh never, never mind, mind. <laughs> never right, mind. It will it's come us. back up. It will yeah. come back to us eventually. We'll get to the scores. Yeah. It's yeah. currently our beautiful yeah. faces, yeah. but uh, but yeah, like you said, like we've lost a lot of, of important. We were one in particular we were keeping out that just missed the cut uh, that we were keeping an eye on, unfortunately. Yeah, spicy appies, unfortunately losing to a tiebreaker to day left to get that twenty fourth spot. I will say from watching him, I'm not surprised. He, <laughs> he's, from talking to him, he's just like, I want to have fun. So he took Rising Spell Force sure. and forced Ezreal, and it did not work out. He ate an eighth, but you know what? He's he's just having fun. It's all good. Yeah, and that's what it's all about here. I mean, it's, it's always exactly. fun to win, but it's more fun just to enjoy the game we all love. But, uh, I mean, the players at the top certainly are having the most fun here. You can see Void Sin, Spartan, uh, Pachygon, and Basso with, and with 20 plus, and that's, I mean, that pretty much assures them into the next round in a lot of ways. Yeah, and it's also not surprising. You've got yeah. Voidson, who I guess is just a, a land beast. He's Apparently. still our defending champion from Tactician's Crown 2, still at the top by two points. And then our next three, all tied together at 20, are either kind of like known for being past tournament beasts in like the Riot tournaments, mm -hmm. or Bosso Skills, who is up and coming, fresh off a third place in the mid-set finale. He's one, of those, he's one of those newer faces we're really looking at and is one of the favorites to win this tournament. Yeah. I will say the other thing that we've been keeping an eye on and watching with this is that uh, notably a lot of those players are in tri-state area. So really uh, the tri-state home, you know, kind of home turf advantage really coming into an advantage here because these players like Stellar Minhe and uh, Joe Bookmark just falling short. They are a little bit further down, but they've, they've started to recover as we've seen them play into the games. And we'll be checking out Pool C here, which has a lot of strong talent coming into this. Yeah, this lobby C we're about to look at is pretty nuts. Yeah. Um, I believe it's got it's got Pocky, Pocky. and Bosso yes. skills in it very notably. So that's those are two players we're especially going to be looking at. Yeah. Um, get they're they're going to be wanting to especially solidify their leads going into the final lobby at this point, unless they go eighth. Even, actually, even they can eat the eighth, really. They can they could eat the eighth and they'd be okay, but it wouldn't set them up to win the tournament. And of course, these players they're here to have fun. They're also here to win. Yeah, I mean, there's there's not necessarily there's the cash prize, there's t-shirts, there's a lot at stake here, and there's a lot of things to keep an eye on. So. Uh, you know, you do want to win. You want to have fun. Maybe this is one of those chances where you can kind of test the waters, though, on some of those kinds of oddball comps. Maybe try out something you've been brewing in the back ends and see. All right, all right I have a little testing room. Let's just try something different, see how it goes. You eat a fourth or a fifth, and it's not the worst place to be. Yeah. But uh, you limit test and tourney? Uh, Screw it. <laughs> look, I, I'm a gambler, all right? I'm, I'm willing to admit, like, if I've got a lead and I need to know, I mean, we've seen some odd comps that have really found success, though. Uh, like the Renegade one we were looking at, that Renegade 3 that, that popped up uh, in round two. Like those kinds of comps can come through, and maybe you're kind of limit testing them in some ways. But, you know, if you happen to have the comp that no one's really playing and you can kind of find it, that's a good, now this is a good time to test it. Yeah, we've seen a lot of players go for, like, less common reroll comps, and that ends up kind of speaking to just, like, general game knowledge of knowing that this setup will work mm -hmm. or sometimes even you don't know if the setup will work yeah. but you have enough like base knowledge to think this is something that could work you take the risk and it just pays off and it pays off a lot of times yeah, yeah. Uh, the other thing to note is we we have a third guest joining us in and out but let's jump in right with basso right away on this opening carousel and uh i mean I've, i'm very interested because it's it's it, these opening carousels you know there's not too much to look at as we all start jump into it uh, but Basso is the one we have been coming into. You know, this is a rising star, right? This is someone we have to keep an eye on just from the recent uh, victories they've had. Yeah, he's he's been really starting to make a name for himself in set eight. He started coming up around set seven. Um, I believe he played in set seven regionals and started to make a name for himself. He hit rank one for the first time that set, but this set especially, he has been exploding onto the scene, really making a name for himself, especially in that mid set. And with as stacked... Uh, with with a field as stacked as this oh, one, yeah. a tournament win here, I think actually just solidifies him as a tourney beast, just straight up. Oh, yeah. Uh, picking up the two early ashes, looking maybe on those recons just to kind of pick it in. And it looks like we got our first ju our guest jumping on here. So uh, jumping onto the mic shortly, let's taking a look around. But yeah, two ashes as it starts to be, maybe just seeing some inspiration out of that recon uh, from earlier. But uh, hi. Hello. Welcome on. I mean, uh, 
you, you played well, but here you are. We're still happy to have you here. Yeah, I mean, my game one definitely could have gone a lot better. And then if I had played that game better, I went third in my last game and it was like one or two points off. So. Oh. Yeah. Hello. It, I mean, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you eat the loss, and it just that ends up, you know, kind of pinwheeling in some ways. But uh, wh tell us, give us a little insight here, because as we're watching Basso and we're looking at these early picks, what were some of the things you were thinking about going into these early rounds? Like, what what were these things going into your mind that really kind of set you up for those victories? Also, introduce yourself real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I am a uh, Ferris or the Ferris Wheel on Twitch. I am a one of the many Masters players who came to this tournament. And then to answer your question, I think it was really about what the 2-1 augment was going to be, whether it was going to be hero or, you know, just like a standard augment. Because mm -hmm. um, you really have to prep for the early 2-1 hero augments because you just end up in a lot of, like, reroll situations when that happens. Yeah. So playing around your pairs early or kind of whatever items you're getting, especially with some of the new item changes they made in the most recent patch. Like, in my last game, I had the five-item opener, mm -hmm. which I was not very prepared for, despite yeah. having pretty strong items. I think Bossa would agree with you with that, taking unrelenting skills and choosing the Vi to power up here down the line. Yeah, these early augments from the heroes really do kind of set the pace, right? Because it really makes you kind of decide what is the path you're looking for? What are you kind of going to put your strength into early? And they can be a bit daunting of a decision. This can almost arguably be a place of, uh, you know, make or break in some ways. Yeah, and with Bossa picking um, four uh, Brawler early, uh, Unrelenting Force is actually really strong in terms of like tempo if you hit that early by two. So it can really like streak you through stage two and three um, if you get the right items as well. Like usually you want Titans on by as well. I mean, the items will come in down yeah. the line, but right now the Brawlers are looking pretty sw pretty good to overwhelm. It's just the lone Ash, and she'll be quickly taken care of down the line. So uh, the early lead here for Basso, I mean, to be expected in some ways. Like you said, Brawler 4, just a really strong opener, and I think most of this field would have agreed in a lot of ways. Yeah, and very interesting that he sold the an entire Ash 2 to play for Brawler as he hits a whole Blitzcrank <laughs> <What's> 2. <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> that that, hit that hit helps a lot. Wow. That, gi that gives uh, him an upgrade in there. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and then he's typing. Um, yeah, yeah. Like but but selling that in order to get four brawler on board to real really take advantage of the Sunfire Cape, just buy so much time for that Sunfire to do damage, I think it actually ended up being the correct decision. We poke around the lobby. Pikey Gum has a Jax 2 on 2-2, two two, you know, standard yeah. stuff. Yeah. Wait, is, is he underground Jax 2? No, no. Wait, no. I don't Are think he was. Uh, I... He might have been, but we'll we'll keep an eye on that. Even the way the Jax two this early on two two is just he, insane. He is underground's Jax two. That's oh insane. Oh my to me. god! Wow. Uh, yeah, this jump over to Pocky. Yeah, this is an insane opener for him. I mean, uh, even if you don't want to play the Jax long term, that's just a great carry for the early game. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if he can play Jax long term. He doesn't have any bows. His items are a little awkward for Jax. The double, uh, the double sword. It, Jax can make use of sword items, but it's he's not really an AD champion. Um, but having having that Jax too is going to be very strong. It's going to allow him to preserve HP while playing underground. Underground isn't really like some of the uh, some of the econ trades from previous mm -hmm. sets with like Fortune and Mercenaries, where you were trying were trying to lost streak with the with the nature of how you stack underground. You can win or you can lose, mm -hmm. and it's you definitely want some losses in there to be, be able to effectively stack underground and get to the higher tiers, but preserving HP there is really important in the process, and because you can, you m like you might as well. It puts you in a much better spot and less of a first or eighth spot, although when, when you cash out, it still allows you to get that massive power spike to propel you to a first. Yeah, and speaking of power spike, yeah, these uh, these Gadgetines suffering from that power spike in front of them, the back line just of that underground really just carrying through, and even the extra brawlers on the bench, eventually the Jacks will fall, but uh, it looks Who like it is going to fall actually, that way. Yeah. The Gadgetine uh, items come through in the end. I mean, the extra brawlers on the bench signal that they also want to look and kind of sneak into that brawler end, and we'll have to see with Pocky how that kind of pans out, because right now, like you said, underground is still up. That's still giving them some uh, some moments, so giving that loss streak will come in huge. Yeah, I mean, with the Jax, too, he can really choose to uh, win or lose streak here. I mean, now that he's lost, he can try and play around losing more, getting up to, like, maybe underground tier 3, because he has so much HP with the early underground plus Jax, too, that he can uh, probably sack a couple of rounds here. Go for underground to get a better cash out, or he could play the one cash out just over and over again. Or if I was, was about to say, if he got that bow, he could opt for the jack, the full jacks angle. Although him not getting the bow is a little bit rough, 
takes a vest instead. Honestly, I have no idea what angle he's actually going. The I, I, having a Jax too early tends to signal, hey, I want to play Jax. But yeah. we'll we'll see where he ends up going. He I did peek. He's got a Sona in that last shop, so he can add that as a as a fourth underground to just stack that faster. Cool guy Dom, who we're on board with now, also has four underground, so we're gonna have a bit of an underground lobby. Yeah, as I say, it looks like we have a couple players looking at this, and now we'll see. I mean, just kind of scanning around, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, across the board things. Brawlers also being kind of the other one, and other supers coming up too. So uh, some old notes, some new notes. I think we are kind of expanding out and just saying, look, we can still push this underground, we're finding value with it. Even if you don't want to stay in it long term, you can just, like you said, cash out one or two, and maybe that's the case, just play the Lost Streak here for Cool, Digom, uh, cool Guy Dom. Play the Lost Streak, come back, cash in one or two things, and then move on to something you really want to play. Yeah, it looks like Heavy Joe also has a Jax angle, and if, with the Bloodthirster already slammed, has yeah. the Cleansing Safeguard on for, to have the Lee Sin, has a Redemption slammed on it. Um, it's It looks like it looks like that Pocky might have some Jax competition, so we'll we'll see how that works out. We'll see if if Pocky ends up pivoting or he does end up just committing to that committing to that Jax angle. I mean, the Jax angle as we've seen has been like in this in this lobby alone is pretty contested. He's gonna keep the he's gonna keep going. Might as well keep going. It's just money there, so nothing really to stay in. I, I I do think that given how contested underground is looking right now, there's still like you kind of have to just consider what are my other options and. You know, not slamming the jacks and putting any things on it might have been a right call, honestly. Yeah, he, maybe he even, we didn't see, but if he had scouted and seen that, hey, uh, Kevy Joe's also playing jacks, that makes him a little less inclined to go for the jacks angle. So he'll, he'll, he'll probably keep his options open. It might just end up being a standard Samira out of underground angle. You have the AD items already. Um, so we'll Pocky will get his cash at some point. He will eventually get it, and Cool, Di cool Guy Dom also going to eventually get this cash out. As a, again, this will hit it into three, but the Lost Streak is fine. You're expecting that. A lot of good items sitting there on the bench, and it looks like they have an eye for some recon angles, just judging by the Ash and the Kaisa sitting there, maybe opting and seeing if the anybody else pans out into that way. I, I don't think that's a bad flip out if you're going to do it, but it is a little bit of a tough uh, angle to get into when you when you look at like a front line that needs to get built up. Yeah, it is more or less a full full pivot from this point. Although you you can naturally tech in the recons anyway with the with the Ezreal mm -hmm. already, and then S two actually that's helping him that's helping him kill units and save some yeah. HP. Um, but he he has that as an option. He ha it's probably going to be some kind of AP angle. He already has he already has the AP items. Yeah, it's worth noting that uh, Dom is fighting for his life here, already taking this <laughs> early at 70. Uh, and, like, needs to come up from behind here to keep himself alive into these future cuts. So, uh, more recons. More <laughs> look, more recons. <laughs> Another rain. You, look, I mean, the signal's there at this point. Like, that's a that's a pretty much a gift. You take that at least at some point, in some ways. Right, like, does want him to play. Oh, and there's another, another one. Kaisa. There's a Kaisa. Yeah. Okay, well, you have, I mean, you have like, a line. You have the you have, you have the four. rage blade, right? Yeah, already? there's a rage blade there too. Might as well. Do you have a tier on the Sona? Because he could also play around Spark. I thought that was there also. Now um, we'll have to see if it shows oh, up. Oh wait, he sells both kaisas. Okay, just he's making 50. 50. Yeah. Okay, so he's, he's just making 50. So he's not. So he's committing to not recons then. Okay, I guess not. That's a bold choice. Bold, and let's see if it shows up. Yeah. The, the, I mean, that was like, I, I'm reading that. Maybe I'm reading it. Like, maybe I'm the plat in the lobby, but like, I'm reading <laughs> that as like a, a free gift. Like, recon four falls into you. I take that. Recon 4 definitely feels strong, but he also had the JG, so maybe he was thinking, like, if he plays around that, then you don't need the 4 Recon, because you, you already are doing Spellcare with the item. But, yeah, I mean, if I was in that position and saw the Kai'Sa pair, I probably would have just yeah. left all 4 items. But um, there's a reason I am no longer playing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's uh, a reason. Yeah, there's a yeah, reason there's we're a, behind there's the There's a reason here. I'm on, the ca or on casting here now. But, um, yeah, I mean, from that spot, he definitely wanted to maybe just econ up and just continue to play around the underground. 71 HP isn't the lowest. Like, he could have been in the 60s as well from that spot. And so keeping up uh, the HP and then just going maybe for, like, a four cash out there definitely could have definitely could put him in a really strong position later on with those AP items. Yeah, and get checking him back with Pakigam again. Looks like Recon's getting a little bit more attention across the board. Even if it's just splashes, it's still working into this underground a lot. And uh, Pakigam sitting at mid-table, you know, has been cashing oh. it. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, oh. High end augment. Does he want high end or does he want brawler here? I 
That's a good question. He's going to take Brawler. He's going to take Brawler. Interesting. I mean, uh, and then Samir and Chop. Uh, yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. That's an auto pick. It looks like I don't think that's a bad take though. He's going to build up the front line yeah. and, and really try to put the power onto it. You have two bruisers already. You can probably get to four and then power out the rest of your underground with that. That seems like a, a decent line to me. Yeah. Him still being on Vi one is a little weird. Honestly, uh, he rolls down a little bit here, down to ten. Doesn't hit the Vi two. I mean, he could still just continue playing around that underground, but having Vi2 would have definitely kept his front line a little better. Um, and then having, I wonder if he puts in four, just says, like, he doesn't need the, um, the vein, but he's going to stay three for now. You yeah. are losing a lot of damage if you take out a vein too. Like yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. a lot. Like, I can imagine maybe taking out the, uh, um, what is her name again? <laughs> <laughs> the Void Mother. Belveth? Belveth, well, Belveth well, thank yeah. you. Yes. yes. Um, if you take out Belveth and then maybe like have played uh, for Brawler, you're in a strong spot too. But I mean, his board's still wiping, so yeah, he's like he's in a good spot. He is still coming up pretty strong, even with a couple of those units to grow. But he's got time and energy here as we check in around, and there's still two people up on the high end, uh, Kevy and G and uh, Shen, still on win streak, still up near the hundreds. So. Uh, I mean, the lobby's still got a lot of uh, hot players right now. It's still kind of open based on everything. And uh, a Pakigam, you know, a flexible comp. L where do you go from here, Riley? I feel like, oh, my God, Pocky, I've, I've, the brawler take is actually really interesting to me. I think he's just going to end up using that as really as just really strong front line and just play backline just play backline AD, AD carry although slamming the protector's okay. bow onto the Belveth is a very interesting choice okay i i, I mean, mean if you're if you're playing Jax, then in, then the brawler take makes absolute sense but you have the deathblade slammed so i th it feels like he's just going to end up with six brawler just as a beefy front line but i don't know what his carry is because he has he has these weird items on the Belveth. He sold a Samira. Yeah, that was the weird part for me, too. Yeah. I, I mean, you can play Deathblade with Samira. That's not the worst. Um, and I think, yeah, like you said, he's just going to be using that Brawler as a front line. And then the the Val Slam was interesting for me, but I wonder I if he was just using it to keep the Belveth alive yeah. in like situations like this. Where the like Val Slam is so interesting because you could have totally put it on the Vi, and honest, the Brawler Spat plus if you transferred Deathblade eventually to Belveth, I think that's actually a really viable carry for that uh, Brawler front line because the Brawlers will just buy so much time for her to stack up um, stack up on her ultimate and be able to spit out so much damage that the Val Slam on her just almost feels like a mistake. I mean, it could just also be, I mean, like you said, Pakigam has been a solid player throughout the, this run so far. Uh, there's obviously something we don't quite know going on, especially given how many Brawlers and how many Underground have been in this. Maybe they're eyeing that as like a, as a potential down the line swap. Maybe just look thinking, look, I can't hang in this forever. The lobby's starting to clear out. Maybe I can ride this, but uh, you know, eyeing the rest of the lobby and looking at the rest of this carousel, it's very clear that uh, you know that was a decision made, and uh, maybe they'll find the, the the value in it. But let's pop, jump over to Poppin and see what's Poppin. Uh, also sitting on a little bit oh. of a oh, that's a that that is a shop. Who okay? That is a shop you want to see when you like. Yeah. That that's like your four one shop, honestly. The yeah. what? Way wow. okay. Three yeah. shop wow. sets two. You're kidding? No that's, way. That's nutty. That's kind of illegal. That's mm. that can't be right. No, just get the Sejuani two out the back. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh man. And already has. Yeah, I mean he's already on his way to like perfect Samira items. Oh man, I mean, wow. I mean, already looking very, very strong here. Has to at 57, you have to start making this come around. So this fight is going to be crucial. They are on a three loss streak. They can't really afford to go much, much further down. So this has to be a tipping point to bring them back. And I'm looking at this front line brawlers and defenders to really change it. They're holding the line, but the Belveth eventually falls. And uh, I'm sorry, it does does take a rotate around. So uh, it is getting the damage and it is keeping it there. The rest of the pressure now onto the back line makes it so much better. And this is pretty much all for not. It's done here. I think this is the, the turnaround that Poppin was looking for. This <laughs> this Lee Sin just giving me nightmares from the uh, earlier patches when he was way stronger with the two Lee Sins. Mm -hmm. um, obviously falls at the end of the day because his Belveth is still full HP and his Sivir is full HP, but man. Um, that is the shop you want to hit at level 7 and heat it on 6, which is just the the scariest thing if I was in that lobby. If I saw that, I would... That's like the question mark pinging all like for the next 20 minutes. So. Especially with how contested Sejuani yeah. is yeah. as a unit. She's still yeah. like the one of the premier frontline units. Being able to find your two-star Sej already on 3-5 
is not to put you it puts you on such high tempo ahead of the lobby. Yeah, he doesn't have that much gold, but who cares? You yeah. have your strong units already. Yeah, yeah. Sh shout out to High Hand Shopping for that. That really came through in the long run. So uh, going to hopefully keep them out and especially level up on this fight. Looks like it will be a little bit of a struggle on some fronts, but once Shivani gets popping and there's that, it stuns the whole team. Yeah. Absolutely just catches everybody out. I think it's basically front line done. Back line will walk themselves in, and it's basically a walk in the park here. Yeah, I mean, he can sit on this board for the pretty much the rest of Stage 3 and just kind of play for tempo in Stage 4, really just try and econ back up. Um, he's 57 HP. That's a really good spot to be at Stage at like 4-1, basically. Um, and then from there, he can just or they can just go all the way back up, go 8, um, roll for those uh, five-cost units, maybe get a um, an Aphelios in there, and then he's they're in a really good spot. Yeah, that would be a great comeuppance for the sure shot, too. Uh, Senna is putting in a little bit of work, but would be way better to catch that down the line. Uh, uh, finally, we've seen some damage from the high ranks. Basso sitting at now at the top, and Paki now having moved up. Uh, so those two on their hot streaks looking very good. Let's jump over to Basso, uh, who still six brawlers. The also brawler. Yeah, Interesting. I, look, brawlers. We've seen brawlers as a dominant force here throughout these first couple of games, and it's it's very clear that these these changes that came through have been effective. A lot of a lot of brawler, um, a, lot of, a lot of brawlers as frontline in the lobby in general, which I also think makes it all the more important that oh. Pop and Jung hit the Sejuani too already oh, so because funny. they're so contested. Oh yeah, I agree with you completely there. Yep. I mean, that's just been one, that's one of the more important top end brawler pieces. But the other part to that is having a back end carry to do something through the back end of it. And I do think I like uh, this LeBlanc in the back. It's putting in a little bit of work. It feels it feels a little weird, but it is getting the value it needs. Yeah, and once Bossa goes eight. They can put in uh, four admin, and if their four admin is strong, they're going to be in a really good position all through the rest of stage four. Um, especially if you find that early Soraka, uh, you're going to definitely want that, especially with you get two heart, um, you get to play around that as well. So you get to drop the Sona finally. I wonder what his admin is. Uh, we're on land. Hey, someone want to yell at Basso? Ask him what his admin is? Yeah, we'd <laughs> actually, that would actually. That, info. We, that would be great for us to have, and I don't think we'll unfortunately. Hey, Jack, go go find out. Yeah, go find yeah, out we, the right, admin. We, <laughs> we, we sent CLE to go find him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. CLE will have us that information. But right now, the information in front of us says that Gotcha is going to come out uh, uh, the loser of this fight, just given the tools that are there. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Gotcha will probably come out on top, just given these tools that are here. What is it? Uh, he Third has H permanent HP, HP on death. four on brawlers. brawlers. Mm, that's bra kind of disgusting. Yeah, that's pretty gross. That's a great admin trait. Permanent HP on death, but six brawl. Oh, man. This is a chonky team, that means. That means that this team is going to hold oh. up, and maybe this second, second wind? wind would just immediately oh, bust the ops for the phone. Phone. Okay. Oh, because on death. Yeah, yeah, on death. On oh. death, oh. and the, oh. and the, oh. the front line yeah. counts for that. Oh, yep. that's even more HP. Oh, that's even more disgusting. So they'll just get free HP. At great. Uh, that's a great heads-up play because oh, I think wow. we all immediately saw one thing. But, uh, yeah, just giving in and feeding those those turrets, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, dummies will absolutely just get in uh, so much raw value. I mean, you can see the health on those units just growing each time. Also, jumping off, though, here with Shen, still uh, mid-pack looking for something. For they've settled on four recon. It's a little bit behind by the looks, but it is doing the best it can. Some of these items are a little awkward. The RFC on the Velkaz isn't the best item you want to have there, but probably going to transfer it later. Um, cool Kai Dom just hit by three as well um, with Radiant. Oh, yeah. That's oh, he Radiant Spark, yeah. He did end up going for the Ezreal reroll, which I honestly thought he was kind of angling um, off of taking the Vicary augment. So go, probably it's usually the way you go with Yeah, that, you, go, right? you go for either you hit Rising Spell Force or whatever mm -hmm. the Vicary one is called. I don't remember right now. Um, uh, I played it early. Unrelenting Force. Force. Yeah. Yeah. Force, yeah, yeah. 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 I believe they took, yeah. I should know that. I played it earlier. <laughs> um, we have Recon Spat Jax here. Um, definitely, okay. you know, replace it the RFC. Um, kind of funny seeing it like bounce around too. Oh, he's oh, dead. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, four to eighth. Uh, hmm. Cool, Adam. Cool, Adam. We will unfortunately see them possibly here on the desk, so uh, we'll welcome them. But uh, gonna cut back on Paki Gom here. We'll take a belt for their struggles and go through. Uh, finally moved over. To, I mean, again, Recon seems to be now looking at this. It, it seems like now that when we're, when we're looking for backliners, it just seems the easy take for to just grab for Recon and go. Yeah, um, especially with the range huh. gain, right on yeah. the Jacks doesn't need the RFC anymore. Um, then you, you can just keep that, the vein in until you find something better. Um, and then maybe swap over the uh, QSS, though your jacks would probably end up lacking some damage if you did that. 
Well, I mean, is it possible that Jax is really not the end game for this? Because I mean, it's it does work. It can it can make sense here, but I'm not sure I'm sold on Recon Jax either. I mean, it fits into it fits into the Brawler front line, and this this is a very interesting board. Yeah, this I have never seen this, but this is <laughs> just such a pocky thing. He just pulls stuff like this out of nowhere, and he doesn't make it quite work this round no. against the Draven three. But you can definitely see the idea there. Oh yeah, it definitely is. It's a unique mm -hmm. take, and that's what we are kind of wondering, you know, it, when it comes to these later matches. You know, Pocky is safe for the most part, so getting to try this experimental kind of a, a moment might not be the worst place to be. Uh, the Draven Three just kind of catching the edge on it, and I do think that giving in to the uh, the Aegis frontline also oh a good take. Like uh, obviously you need the the defensive angle there from it. So uh, these last couple carousels should be very very important for it. Pakigam also very well known for limit testing in <laughs> tournaments. Uh, see Assassin's Bat Callista in set five regionals that he went eighth on. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Look, sometimes you test. It happens. Yeah, sometimes you, you gotta try. It you gotta yeah, try yeah, you yeah. never know if it works until you try it. And that's a lot of it. Like you said, if you're going to try it, you might as well try it while you're safe, right? Yeah. Pocky's not going to fall out of commission here. So, uh, f you know what? Let's just mess around and find out what happens when we stick a recon on Jax and see what happens. And it's like we were talking about before, before the game. Like, some sometimes you you just are trying something but there's also the idea and like the fundamentals mm -hmm. that you just you just have enough game knowledge to know that this will probably work and to Baki's credit it has worked so far and there's been a lot of solid play behind it to get him to this point he actually he took I believe a two a two stack underground cash yes. out yes. to mm -hmm. ju to just get a couple items to just have just get get him a strong early win streak to get him to this point to keep himself healthy and he is at the top of the leaderboard for it yeah, I mean, he, that's the important thing of all this, right, is as long as you are at the top and as long as you're holding, it works. And uh, right now, these four recons are putting in a lot of work, including against their recon counterparts here. The Kaisa in the back line of Shen trying to put in will eventually fall, and I think that's basically all she wrote. Uh, the last of these members will fall, and I mean, yeah, the recons here, the recon jacks might be a thing. <laughs> yeah, it really might. Uh, the extra crate you get on it replaces, like, potentially, like, a JG you would have put on the jacks anyway. Um, I just think it's super funny the way the Jax will just like jump away and then go right yeah. back to <laughs> the recon, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just really hopping around. Um, I wonder if uh, Pakigam going eight here signal he's not gonna stay with the Jax long term and maybe just play for going nine. I mean he's 80 HP, right? Yeah, we'll find out later as we'll jump over to Basso who has fallen to the mid pack here, still on their brawler. They got their admin four yep. though. Uh, hey someone, what's his, what's his four yeah. admin? Uh, <laughs> that is the important question here because there's a lot at stake. I'm still keeping an eye on this LeBlanc though. Because I'm, I'm not really sold admin? on it. I'm, I'm not really sold on this LeBlanc. It's a good lineup, we got the four, but I'm just wondering if this is the setup they're looking for for their carry. Yeah, the IE is a little awkward. I mean, it gives you, it still gives you the spell crit that you want, but you don't have the extra AP from JG. Um, okay, uh, it's a gold admin. Got <laughs> He's got us. The gold admins are really strong because he just randomly will just start econing up. Like, yep. he, he's already at thirty again, right? Up, oh, yep. He's at thirty. He's already at thirty. Loss. Yeah. Yep. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> um, and then having. Wow, that is that's so much. That's so much gold. He went from like twenty five. Yeah, what was it? Twenty five to thirty five. Wow. Oh my! <laughs> and he's at almost forty now. That's insane. What? The, yeah, he just sells the Camille. Go forty. Like, yeah. This is like the fastest way to go nine too. It's so. It can be really strong. The only awkward part of this comp is that he just has a random Vi one on his board. Yeah, having the Vi yeah. one as your as your item as your tank item holder right now is kind of awkward. Yeah. And to be fair, he hasn't found the Sejuani yet, so that's part that's part of yeah. why it's his front line is just kind of lacking at the moment. I think the other one interesting one is the is the triple LeBlanc just out there. Like I feel oh, like we're yeah. we're like holding it feels like we're holding places for things that we just haven't found yet. Well also doing this gets you more gold. More deaths, I yeah, guess, yeah. More, more gold. Your your admins are the one that are popping the gold out. Um and so, yeah, the, man, these items, if wow. you got a bunch of tears, oh, and there's a, um, a Sona pair. If you got a bunch of tears, he probably could have started carrying the Sona as well. Um, or not Sona, sorry, uh, Soraka. Hits, as well. hits seven LeBlancs, hit, found, finds his eighth LeBlanc. He could be going okay. for the LeBlanc yep. three angle here. Okay. He definitely had the items to duo carry as oh, there's well. Oh, a, there's a Sujuani, though. That's yep. Sujuani showed, so now we're going we're gonna to get our item and, and take it. A um, little bit slow to, to oh, transition, and find his okay. LeBlancs here, finds a fiddle as well. That's 
I mean, that's, that's always something. strong, yeah. Yeah, I really thought they were going to drop the, the Vi, eventually move tank items to a stronger tank. Um, but they definitely have these items to start duo carrying with the Soraka. Um, so that's going to be really strong, especially with the on health. Uh, your Soraka's yeah. just going to be super tanky, lasting through the whole fight, healing up. And then you have so much gold. I mean, like, they rolled, uh, they rolled pretty down. deep. They rolled yeah. pretty deep, and they're already back at 30. Um, the one one off the uh, LeBlanc. There's another gold. Oh, my. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the uh, gold augments with um, admin are so funny to watch from as a spectator because they just, like, start popping out of nowhere. Uh, um they really are. I, I'm a little concerned, though. Falling down to 19, though, like this loss streak has hit them really hard. I feel like there needs to be something that comes in and gives away because they are running finally out of time and resources. They finally find the buy too. Uh, I mean, is this enough, though? Is my thought going into this? You are you're kind of on the cusp of seventh, and Bosso does have space to oh, play. There's, there's but, a little blank three. Okay, there's space to play for Bosso, but this is kind of a, I would call an, an anomaly from this upcoming player in this tournament. Yeah, I. To be honest, I'm not super convinced by this six brawler. I think there are other units you could start maybe teching in over it. But it's really hard. Who do you drop, right? Like, you have the... You want to keep the Vi because of the Unrelenting Force. You want to keep the Sedge because it's strong. And you kind of have to keep that uh, Blitz uh, for the admin trade. So he's kind of locked into uh, six brawler for the rest of the game. But finding that Vi 2, finding the LeBlanc 3, definitely keeping him um, a lot healthier here. Uh, uh, the LeBlanc really just sniped. Oh, yeah. And it gets <laughs> sniped that zone. I mean, I would love to see the actual number of HP on that LeBlanc because that thing has to be huge at this point. So even if you do get to those later rounds, it w it should just be able to tank itself through. Look at how many individual bars. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's a lot. That you is kind so of nice. Talking the LeBlanc, yeah. yeah. You saw it at the end there when the trait fell off yeah. right before the round ended. The LeBlanc. Um, the the bars were so much bigger. Yeah. Oh yeah. To, it, like it's kind of where the Soraka is now, I think, but even bigger than that. Oh yeah. So it's just keeping, you know, the longer the game goes, the tankier the LeBlanc and uh, Soraka get, and the yeah, the, the more they just they benefit. Yeah. Move um, over. Move even over that buy right with unrelenting force, even though it's a buy too, the fact that it's getting all that HP long term. It's going to make it just like a beast in the late game. Just super tanky board and all that HP they're getting off the admin just bolstered by the extra percent uh, percent HP that the Brawler trait gives, and especially at 6 Brawler. So, yeah, he's he is stuck in 6 Brawler, quote-unquote, but it's not – is it really stuck if <laughs> it's super stuck? strong? Yeah. yeah. Is he stuck if he's winning? But yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> but uh, Shen will unfortunately get stuck with a loss there, now yeah. fighting for their own life. Uh, again, just – Coming in and looking oh. at the last of these, you know, trying to keep an eye on the competition. Is this going to be the next out? Bosso falling two as well. So three uh, HP now. Three HP hanging on by a thread. The rest of those are coming around and uh, recon four into the Star Guardian. I just don't. I feel like this is a little late to this <laughs> comp even coming into the last carousel. Um, Sorry, ig ignore us over here. We just saw uh, Turbo Turtle slash Joe Bookmark just jump. Yeah, just for like some <laughs> reason. <laughs> just Goomba stomp huh? something. Um, it but is yeah, what it is. I. I saw Basso, the fight for Basso right at the end there, and his LeBlanc just got melted. I yeah. don't know who he fought, but their board is looking strong. Um, for Jason Shen here, his not having any of these like three star recons is really, it's really hurting. It's really hurting. Like your board doesn't really turn on until uh, you hit one of your three stars, whether yeah. that's your three star front line. Uh, <laughs> these rolls are so uh, painful. There's oh a Cho'Gath, man. but that's not really yeah. what you want. You'd really yeah. rather have the Kai'Sa. Yeah. He does. He's probably on one more life, so he. I mean, find he does I mean, find he the has Kai'Sa. It. Yeah, he has a duplicator. I, I think, think you, you have, have to, to do it. this. Yeah. You really just have to. I mean, you could have used it on maybe your front line, but your front line's not that tanky in this maze, and is you need to get that faster. The Syndra also picking up that recon emblem. I. Yeah, I mean, as long as you've got some beefier frontline boys you can throw in there, yeah. this should be okay. But I'm still a little concerned for Shen going into this fight. So uh, the frontline managing to hold their own will send in another one. Fiddlesticks acti activated and is immediately deleted out of that. Yeah. So rest of it coming through. The frontline is holding, so the Kaisa 3 is putting in the damage in the background now. Yep. Another unit coming in. So it looks like Shen will find a new lease on this. The last of the frontline falls. And it's just getting through this beefy, beefy uh, backline units now. All right, so it's three star birth is three star, and the biggest it's thing over. is he had that GS right. He yeah. had the um, giant slayer. Personally, I l I feel like giant slayer always is so strong in every patch this set. It felt like whether it's 
the set frontline comps or just like the beef, like beefy three costs or three stars. Um, it's really interesting though. I usually see the GS on um, the Kaisa. Yeah. Because usually that Kaisa with the whenever you hit like the third auto and the cast, it just kind of blows up a unit. Um, but having the three items here really keeps it strong, keeps it like scaling, and you kind of need that with a lot of like the high HP targets, right? Yeah. To be really fair, I think this is best in slot Kaisa. Yeah. Uh, especially, especially Kaisa 3, especially with the mm -hmm. second wind and with how tanky this lobby is, there's going to be so much time to build up the Rage Blight stacks to get that, to get Shiv procs, and to also keep the Oof. entire team alive. Oof. Going into Jax, Jinx 3 board, but it blows oh, up, the and Kaisa? the Kaisa. Oh, oh the Kaisa not survived. Get taken down. Kaisa does survive. That's yeah. huge. That bumps Jax basically <laughs> down to near zero. Uh, considering there were three below that 10 mark, that will be one more down. Basso falls here on and the And Kevy Joe mark. falls. And Kevy falls at minus 10. Man. So we are almost here, and I'm jacking on with one HP, meaning this lobby. Uh, a lot of a lot of bosses here fell early in this lobby. Uh, still a lot here. Pop and Jung holding on at 51, but I mean this is a very very split top four we're looking at. Definitely, and you kind of have that. Man, I really want to know like what Poppin's early game looked like to get him to this spot. Like he did not give us that <laughs> feed, so we will never know. Unfortunately, we'll have to look <laughs> at. It's like okay. That. He yeah. was streaking a lot early. He was streaking early. Yeah, he was yes. streaking early. He kind of you know lost. Uh, a bit of HP there, but it's streaking again now, right? Like, this um, Belveth 2 is so strong, especially with the RFC, which um, feels a bit like BIS for her sometimes. Um, but then having, like, the Last Whisper for Gunblade keeps your front line alive, mm -hmm. does a ton of damage. Um, his bench is kind of definitely interesting, getting those five costs in 90 gold. I mean, he's, he's okay. loaded. He's, he's got a spend. <laughs> yeah. like, I, spend down I just coming. saw that goal. Yeah, uh, that spend down is coming soon. It's um, just a question mark of do they want to push to nine, I think. And I mean, Oh, he's 100% going nine. Yeah. He's, he's already got to upgrade five costs. Once he gets once he hits level nine, he can just add it yep. even more. Yeah. And also, back back to your point of how, how he got this point, it looks like he was loose streaking early, but he was the one who hit the triple sedge. Yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sedge running early yeah. does the lot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then it got into this point where he was playing around the Belveth. He found a he found the third item for the Belveth with the rapid fire cannon, which get that giving Belveth Belveth that extra range just allows That's her. Big. It just it gives her so much safety because yep. she's dashing around the map. She's not taking as much Ooh. incidental damage, and it allows his board to be strong. Unfortunately, the Belveth does go down. Pockygum still rocking the recon jacks, and it's oh going no to my gosh, going to no take the way. fight. It blew up his board actually. What wow. The um. I can definitely see a world where Poppin was just wanting to see that 100 gold in the bank yeah. before he leveled yeah. up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, we're we're um, greedy for that. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really change anything. He, They didn't really want to roll down anyway um, until now, until the loss. And so uh, really looking for those two costs or two star five costs now. Worth, um. worth noting here, Shen and Jack both on one and two AG respectively. I mean... One of these two is going out, and both of these players, we're sitting kind of in the mid-table here, so uh, mm -hmm. whoever Poppin ends up against, it will be Jason. I mean, this is going to be a very interesting map, because likely Popping will take this. It's just going to be a question of how bad is the hit. Yeah, and um, getting the, the Eternal Winter on the Ramus maybe isn't the item you want to see, but it's still pretty good, because it will stun bad. something. Uh, he also hit the Ramus 3, but... Not enough. Not enough. Yeah. Not, not enough. The this is the power fun. high in shopping. It just, it's, it's not a. I mean, it's not a combat prismatic augment. So you're down that. But when it allows you to get all these two star five costs, there's your combat power right yeah. there. Yep. Uh, and that will be the last two. So four and five have been decided. Jack will take that force knot and sneak in oh. those extra points. But now here, I mean. This is still a lot of HP. Everybody's sitting around 30, so now it comes to these small micro decisions and positioning. As we head into these last rounds, Poppin looking does have a Zac 2 offer there on the table, just Ooh. deciding if they need the bulk, and it looks like they decided they do. They will dump that over, and I think that's the right call. Yeah. Uh, I think I saw Jax 3. Yep. There's yes, the there's Jax. the Jax 3 yeah, on 3. Is. Um, he got double Zeke's on his Leona wow. club. <laughs> Um, so that Aphelios is going to be attacking real fast. Getting the Aphelios 2 is super nice. I mean, it's a much like more consistent carry than the Belveth, in my opinion. Um, or I guess like everyone's opinion at these days. But 
Uh, I know they buffed the red gun in the most recent patch. They so did, yeah. I'm seeing I'm, some of that. I'm kind of surprised they didn't go for the red gun, but does it work that out? Oh, oh, oh it's so very close. close. Very close. Very close. The Jax falls in the end. But, I mean, that Jax at three with the recon. We were kind of memeing on it. We were kind of <laughs> yeah. questioning it. It's Look, good. It's putting it work. It's putting it work. It's we basically an RFC yeah. and a jewel gauntlet yeah. in one. Yeah, exactly. we really can't say four item Jax, it. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that makes this threat a little bit here, and Obu will be the last one looking on three uh, to possibly oh, that's, fall. Oh, that's Bane 3. That's yeah. Bane 3. Yeah, so that'll be – Bane 3 is huge, and that gives Pocky quite a bit of an advantage now going into this. So, I mean, where do you go? What are you looking for if you're Pocky? You already have this wealth of riches. Where is your next step? I uh, mean, at some point, you just – Five you, costs. Yeah, like, you go – you find a way to go level 9. All, you don't really have time. At some point, you're just – you're just trying to find the Sedge 2, and that's the r last real upgrade you need. There's two Jax 3s. That's really interesting. I'm Very interesting. Kind of surprised that happened. Um, let's see. Where that looks like that Jax 3 is going to get uh, buffed as well, though, going into this. It might be absorbed into – it's going – no, it's not. Okay, I thought it was close enough. It's not going to get uh, eaten up by the Draven, but it will be a good defender in that front line for him, though. So Obu – Playing in on his life, that sat, that stun comes through, and it looks like it's just an easy pickup for Gotcha. Oh, wow. wow, Pocky just coming in. He just has to clean this out, and I mean, the four recon's still up. It's over. Is it a double kill? It's out, and he's gone. That's unfortunate. Obu will take that third place. Is it a win here, though? Oh, and oh. very oh. Obu took taking a hit off of Poppin. Well, the ghost taking a hit off Poppin on the way out. So Poppin Jung on one life, Pocky Gom. As long as he can chew through all these five costs that Pop and Jung has, then he can he can take this and put himself in a very good spot at the top of the leaderboard. Yeah. Moving into this heads up is definitely a bit of a, a terrifying moment, especially because the front line of of Poppin is just it's just wider in some ways, and I don't feel like the, this front line. If you're just like eye testing this, the front line of Pocky looks weaker in some ways, but it's, we all know it's not clearly. Yeah, I mean the Jax is just blowing up units, so it it really is like preventing the back line from doing enough. And yeah, the front line is really strong. Um, I'm really interested to see what this Leona does actually, just because it has so much healing and just ends up doing the AOE, like back at full. Yeah, I mean, the stuns will come through. Fiddle will activate there. And it looks like finally the uh, will be hit. There was a wave. It doesn't catch as anybody who you're looking for. But it looks like the recons, again, just stand wow. strong. They will manage to fight this out. And Poppin's out. That means we have our winner. And Pocky will take first in this Stacked lobby. Wow. That brawlers, that brawler emblem echo bought so much yeah. time there it for Pocky. Really it allowed the recons to stack up and get their damage off. Yeah. Take and being down or really just against those those legendaries. At some point, uh, so many three star three costs and a good front line will just be yeah. strong. Plus, you have the combat augments behind them, and so yeah, Pocky taking that first. That's going to put him in a very, very good spot on the leaderboards. Yeah, considering we were looking and eyeing about what about these first players, you know, are, is this a time to experiment? Pocky's just decided, no, I just want to win. I just yeah. well, I came here <laughs> and I want to win, and that's fine. I'm going to do it through an unorthodox way, so uh, kudos to him for that look. I mean, Ferris, how do you feel about those uh, Pocky looking into this next cut? Because obviously he's going to make it. Yeah. I mean, how do you feel he's going to do? How do you feel he's, like, placed in these l future lobbies from what you saw? As someone who's also from New York, uh, I'm all on the Pocky train. Of course. Uh, Pocky and Voidson train. But I think with Pocky, he's such a smart player. Um, and just kind of to that game as well, before uh, coming here, everyone was just saying, just play Jax. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jax just got way stronger on their most recent patch. Um, but, like, Pocky's ingenuity and just thinking outside the box, really playing that recon. Like, he hit the, the tome as his third augment, yeah. got the recon spat, and then played around that in such a smart way to go Jax 3. Um, like, Jax recon is not something I have... Probably, I don't think I've seen I've that yet. Seen it. I played like 500 games of this set. I have yet to see that until today. So I did see. I think Appy's playing it at some point. <laughs> okay, so it's right, not minimal, the literal minimal first time. It's not the literal, yeah. but at least for right. me, I have yet to see that. Uh, but it was such a smart play. I think moving forward, um, the rest of the lobby is you know it just gets harder as more people get cut. But I think um, Pocky's in such a strong position. Yeah. Just like the way he thinks about the game, just puts him kind of like ahead of some others. The Tri-State continues to yep. be dominant here at Tactician's Crown 3. We're going to take a quick break just to kind of get our players make that last cut and get into the next lobby. We will be right back with more incredible action. 